We're talking about how our personalities are meant to operate uh, day by day. And we're doing that in connection with a study that we started eight or nine months ago called What is the Meaning of Life? Uh, why are we here? What's the point of existence? And we reached the place in our discussion where we are satisfied that we were made by a personal being who designed us deliberately in the way we find we are formed. And he did it because he wants us to be his friends. And that he is as personable as we are, which one would expect that it would require a, a, an origin as personable as we ourselves are in order to produce persons like us. And he made us so that we would actually be his friends and so that we would love him and he would love us. And that's actually why you're in existence, because the maker of the whole universe planned you carefully and uniquely to be a friend to him that nobody else can be. It's amazing to think of it, but that's true. And that he has counted even the hairs on your head, and he knows your name. And he is planning to live with you forever. If you will use your own free will during this lifetime to do what he has given you to do here on the earth, and he has a certain job that you alone can do for him. And he has a certain friendship that you can uh, take part in that only you can uh, fulfill. And so you are really unique. There's never been anybody like you in the universe, and there never will be. And so it is... Uh, important to get hold of that because that ties up with the way our personalities operate. And what we have been saying is that they operate on three different levels. They operate on the physical level of our bodies through the five senses by which we perceive the things and the people and the circumstances in the world around us. Then they operate also on the level of our souls. Uh, that's the word that comes from the Greek suke, which becomes our word psyche or psychological, psychiatry, etc. And that's the psychological part of us, our emotions and our mind and our will. And then it operates also on the level of the spirit, which is the real you. And that spirit is the bit that we've most of us lost. Because we normally live somewhere between our body and our soul. That is, our little eyes look out and they study our stocks and shares or the amount of money we have in our bank account. And they send a signal to the emotions of our soul. You're okay, Jack. You have plenty. You don't need to worry, just be relaxed. And our emotions send a signal to our mind, and our mind sends a happy comment out to our wives or our children or our peers, or sends a signal to our hands to be generous. And usually we operate that way because, of course, the opposite happens exactly if we find that we have an overdraft in our bank or we find that we have not put enough away for a rainy day, our uh, eyes send a signal of alarm to our emotions. Our emotions panic and become anxious and worried. They send a signal to our mind just not to say anything to anybody, but to grab what you can. And the mind goes out in a covetous way and grabs whatever it can, or is as nasty or miserable to people as it possibly can be. And so most of us operate a vicious little circle between our body and our soul, so that our will is virtually eliminated from the operation, and our spirit, of course, is absolutely dead. And it's because our spirit is dead that we feel such insecurity. Because the real security comes in our life when you begin to sense that the creator of the world put you here for a purpose. And he has ensured that you have enough breath to keep you alive to this moment. You're obviously breathing, and so he has. He has given you enough blood and kept it circulating around your body, miles and miles of arteries and veins it pours through every day in order to keep you alive. And he has put you here not to starve and not to be destroyed, because there's no point in that. It's purposeless, and everything else that he has done has had great purpose in it, apart from the 
wild things that we human beings have introduced into the world by our own free will. The things that he creates have purpose and design. And so it's reasonable to believe that he will keep his promise to you. And his promise is very clear. Uh, he said it through his son, that unique person that lived in the first century. He said, uh, don't be anxious about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink or what you'll put on. Uh, is not life more than clothing? Uh, and the body is more than food? Uh, look at the lilies of the field. They do not toil or sow or gather into barns. And uh, yet... Uh, not Solomon in all his glory is clothed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? And so his son has assured us that God has not put us here to kill us. He's put us here to do a job for him here on, earth, on the earth, to become like him, and he is going to provide what we need. And he is going to provide the money and the clothing that we need as long as we continue to do what he wants us to do. And, of course, you've found that, haven't you? I mean, you've come through a lot of hard times, but you're still alive. You've come through a lot of times when you think th things wouldn't survive and you can't understand how they did manage, but they have. And somehow the books have balanced and you're still in uh, action and you're still ver fairly solvent. And the truth is, the Creator will take care of you. He will look after you. And of course, as you live, begin to live from your spirit inside out, uh, and you begin to sense that, then through communion with Him, you begin to sense what He wants you to do in this life. You begin to relax and say, well, I just don't have to work to get money. My God uh, has the whole thing organized and uh, the cattle on a thousand hills are his and he's watching over things and he looks after the birds so he certainly has the ability to look after me. And uh, so you begin to relax and say, now, God, what do you want me to do? And then he begins to feed through your spirit uh, and through your intuition a sense of what you ought to do with your life, what you're fitted to do what part of the world you are able to bring into order under his will that no one else is. And then your intuition grasps that, and your conscience then constrains your will in the light of that, to live up to that. And your will then directs your mind to a certain job, to learn how to do certain skills and to perform them. And your emotions are fed by your mind because your emotions actually take their life from your thoughts. And then you express all that through your body, through the actions that you do with your hands and your legs and your feet and your tongue and your eyes and all the rest of your body. And you begin to fill the world with the order that God is bringing through your life. And so your personality operates as it was meant to in an integrated way from the inside out, from your spirit, through your soul, to your body, and out to the rest of the world. And as you do that, your whole personality becomes more and more conformed to God's own unity and his own harmony. And of course, you yourself become fitted to live with him forever and to take part with him in the infinite development of the universe after this present life is over. And so our personalities, you can see, were meant to live from the inside out. Of course, when you don't have that sense of security from the maker of the universe, you have a dreadful sense of insecurity. And everything operates the other way. And you know, you don't need me to describe how it operates. If you then take a page and you put body on the top and soul in the middle and spirit at the bottom and you see how your eyes see the lack of money in your bank account sends a signal to your emotions to get worried. Your emotions bypass your will completely. To tell your mind, look, do something about this. Your mind tries to manipulate some of the stocks and shares to meet the needs, fails or succeeds partially or completely. The will is left out. The conscience isn't affected. The spirit isn't involved. And you 
bring about a temporary security that lasts for about a week. But meanwhile, your spirit still senses that you're a little insect fly on a vast world with very little support that is visible. And so your spirit remains dead. You never get a real sense of security. And yet your soul and body live in continual strain. So there is a great way to live. Let's talk about how to come into it tomorrow.